Hey, 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 and welcome back to the Fully Booked Photographer. And we're back with the four Stooges, not just three anymore. Oh, sorry, we're the Musketeers, not the Stooges. Uh, Jonathan's gone, what, what's he talking about? Who's the Stooges? He's not old enough to remember. <laughs> Neither is Brad. Do you remember the, the three Stooges? I do. Okay. Well, they were before my time. I remember my, my parents referring to it, and it is a piece okay. of pop culture. Who's on first, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember all their names. Larry and Mo, and can you remember who the Larry, Mo, and Curly, I think. Curly, Curly, that was it. That was it. Oh wow! So, guys, we're not here to talk about the three studios or the four musketeers. We're here to talk about. It is a mindset topic, um, but it's more than just a mindset topic. It's about if you truly, 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 truly want to reach your desired level of success and create the life that you love from photography, right? You have to commit, you have to commit. And this is not just to photography, this is to anything, right? And we've been doing a lot, you know, we talk a lot about this and we're all avid readers and and, and listeners and all that sort of thing and learning from people who are far better than us and and listening to their their ideas and things. and, And, Recently, I've been I've been listening to a certain psychologists, and they talk about this idea of, you know, you've got to want it, not need it. And it's an interesting idea, isn't it, about wanting it? And 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 they were talking about, um, what does wanting mean? Like, you don't have to justify a want; you just need to want it. You don't have to be able to tell somebody why you want it; you just need to want it. So I thought it would be a great idea, right, to talk the four of us to talk about something that comes to mind and we haven't prepared for this guys. Something that comes to mind where you just wanted something, right? And you just dug deep and did it. Brad, tell us about something that you just wanted, right? And you didn't, you didn't feel the need to justify it to anybody or explain it to somebody just wanted it. How, How big of a want do you want Ronan? Whatever want comes to mind, Brad. <laughs> uh, I'm going to sound like a douche. Um, but I always wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted property. I wanted wealth. Um, and I, I was desperate for it. And I threw myself into that. Um, like, like a man on fire. I, I was reckless about my ambition to achieve that. So when you think about that, right, it wasn't necessarily that you needed the money of being a millionaire, right? The want was different, right? What, the, what the, was the, that want? The, the want was, I was going to say status, but it's not. It, it wasn't status for self. It was, um, I suppose, for my own self-worth and self-being. I wanted to be able to achieve something. So I, it's why I threw myself into property. It's because I, I wanted something that was mine. I, I, I was in a family business. Um, it's very hard to be an individual when you're in a business with your parents, and that's that's your dad's business, and that everybody around you knows it as your dad's business. So it's quite you, it's hard to be able to forge something individual or unique from that. So it's it's why I threw myself recklessly into property. Um, I became obsessed with housing and houses and obsessed with learning as much as I could about it and uh, and then just going out and doing it, um, which is really funny because I, I wasn't actually that obsessed about learning about it. I was more obsessed about doing it. <laughs> I read two books and thought I knew everything. thought that were it. Job done. <laughs> Job done. There's nothing. I know everything about property now. Cool. <laughs> I guess I'll go buy some. <laughs> So, Brad, is there is there a time when you didn't want something, but you felt you needed it? And was the motivation different when you felt you needed something rather than wanted it? Yeah, my, my uh, I was a monster um, in 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 my in my younger days, as as my parents. And wonderful wife will attest to when I was in the studio. Um, hearing about your father, Ronan, I, I think I have a lot of similarities with your father. Uh, and I, I would rule with an iron fist. 
Um, but but yeah, so, so I, I was I was certainly more motivated because my goal was much more clearer, uh, and I was I was desperate to achieve it. Mm. And, and it's think- funny because because you talk about the gap in the game, you know, I, I probably can going off topic now, but it's funny because I, I have the thing that I strived for 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 se- seven years. Um, I, I, I have it. Um, I don't feel like how I would feel when I got it. <laughs> I was happier then moving towards it than I am now with the thing. So uh, so moving towards a meaningful goal is, is what happiness is for me. So it, it's that mindset of, um, of being appreciative for what you do have. Yeah, and that's critical, isn't it? Because... You 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 want something. You want something more now, but it's not about. You don't do it for the money because you don't have to do it for the money, right? Because of what you've already done. So mm. it 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 goes beyond that. It goes beyond. It's it's. It's you just want to do something, else, and you will if you haven't already discovered that you will. But um, but it's interesting because uh, you know I I did a, I did a a testimonial one of our fully booked photographer clients today um uh, rachel and we, she was telling her story you know that she had put all the time into having a great sales process and done all the sales training and really good photographer and she'd sort of identified who her ideal client was you know but she was still about to give up because she didn't have enough clients you know she wasn't fully booked and she came in and she did the 30 day challenge and she said to herself, you know, I want this. Not that I want the 30 day challenge. I want to be successful, a successful business owner. So she said before, like she'd do something and she'd give up on it because she didn't want it. She needed it. You know, her mindset was different. The mindset of a want is different to the mindset of a need. Um, and she said, I want this. I want to make this work. I am going to make this work. And she did. And she did the challenge from start to finish. And now she's fully booked, you know, um, and she's in Glasgow, Scotland. And she just had a, a she just had a 2000 pound sale for a fully box full of 20 images, you know, her last sale. So not only did she want it, but when she did her numbers piece, she realized that she needed to double her prices. So, so the forty box of twenty images that she previously sold for a thousand pounds, she just sold for two thousand pounds, and her clients didn't even flinch their eyelids. Um, so it's interesting when you truly want something, that um, and you put your mind to it, and you just do it right. You just have to do it. You've got to want it though, and you don't have to justify to anybody why you want it. Janine, talk to us about one of your wants. Oh, I was worried you were going to come to me next. <laughs> so, I don't know, Ronan, do you want like a business want at the beginning of the story? Or you just want something silly. Like, what do you want? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's, it's something that, 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 that you can, in your own mind, right, see that it was different than a need that you might give up on. You know, that it was something you truly wanted and you just focus on that and you just did it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll give you, I mean, I could go for the obvious of, quitting engineering and starting the studio, right? But, you know, no one needs to hear that. So I think I've already told that story before in the podcast anyways. So let's do something silly. So when I first started working at Motorola as an engineer, so I went from poor college student to all of a sudden making like crazy money for a, you know, 22 year old. And so I, I, and I was I was in a world surrounded by men. It was like all like guys, right? The engineering world. And they all drove like crazy cars. And they were mostly like like crazy like muscle cars, right? Like Mustangs and GTOs and Camaros and things like this. So I just got it set in my mind that I had to have a sports car <laughs> and that I wanted a sports car just to be like all the guy engineers I was working with. And so I got it in my mind. I saw this Camaro and I fell in love with it. And I, I had, it was so impractical, but it didn't matter. Like I got it in my head. I had to have this Camaro and I wanted this Camaro and I went out and bought the Camaro. And I, <laughs> I remember my parents, I called them from Atlanta. And I'm like, guess what I just bought? And they're like, you bought a Camaro? Like why would, 
why did you go buy a Camaro? It's so impractical. I'm like, I don't care. I want this car. It's a fun car. I can zip around Atlanta and be this cool chick in a Camaro. And I just wanted it. <laughs> and so I bought it. <laughs> That's probably one of my for someone who's actually not that much of a car person, and now I drive cars until they pretty much die, uh, it was just the funniest thing that at that point in my life, what was important to me was buying this Camaro. <laughs> and I did, so, yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't the Camaro you wanted. It was about what driving that car said to other people about you, right? Yeah, it was. You know, I kind of wanted to fit in with the, the crowd of, of people I was working with, and to say that I can do this, you know, I'm not a poor college student anymore. I'm not, you know, seeking my parents' approval on the automobiles that I purchase. And it was all that kind of stuff. Actually, it's all the stuff Dave Ramsey warns people not to do. <laughs> when you get out of college and you find money, don't make these mistakes. And buying a car is like his number one mistake not to make. So if I knew Dave Ramsey when I was 22, I would have saved myself a lot of money, but it didn't matter. It was like one of those feel good things. It was a I think an adult coming of age moment that I had to have. You wanted it and you did it. I wanted it and I did it and I had the means to make it happen. So I did. And uh, it was actually a good feeling, but it wore off fast. And I think like Brad kind of talked about that too. Like, uh, you know, once you drive the car for a while, and this is when you know you're not really a car person. <laughs> Cause I'm not a car person. Uh, once I drove it, like it wore off. It's just a car that you have to put gas in, that you have to clean, that you have to drive. And uh, it's just a car, right? So the the euphoria of making that decision and buying it wore off pretty quick. Uh, but it was, I still remember the feeling of getting it and buying my first car without my parents there. It was pretty cool. There you go, you see? Um, but you're right, you know, because when you want something, you get it. Most Most of us say, well, what do I now want? You know, it does very right. quickly. And you say, what's next? Well, sometimes it wears off quickly. Sometimes it doesn't. We talk about that again. Um, Jonathan, so tell us a time of when you really wanted something and you, you just put your mind to it and nothing was going to distract you from this. You were going to get this. You were going to get what you wanted. I just had an epiphany about this whole thing, especially after Brad's story, but... Let me share, because I think the epiphany is relevant, so let me share that time that you asked about, Ronan, and then let's talk about... Anyway, we'll get there. So, a time I really, really wanted something. So back in 2019, I was, similar to Brad, desperate to make running affiliate ads work. Desperately wanted it. (laughs) Because I wanted freedom. That was what I desired most. So I wanted freedom and I wanted control. So at the time I did everything in my power to invest as many hours as possible into learning how to do it, including hiring a mentor, working with the mentor. And I said, I know you can do this because I know you do spend tens of thousands of day doing this successfully. I'm going to do everything you tell me to do. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to trust the process. And I'm going to make it work. And I had to do some, in hindsight, silly things back then to make stuff like that happen, like extending loans and taking on debt to make it happen. And that's what I did because I wanted it. I wanted it badly, but there was nothing going to stop me from having it. But Similar to Brad, when I got there, the feeling was meh. It didn't feel good. (laughs) It's like, so the epiphany I've kind of had is that it's not the destination that makes you feel good. It's falling in love with the process and it's falling in love with the the journey of getting there. Uh, I saw, I don't know, it was on Instagram or Facebook or something. It's been around a while where... Usain Bolt's quote about, I trained my ass off for four years to run a nine second race. You know, it's about that process that he, he, he's not in love with the, the, the winning the race is just the end result. He's in love with that. And that's what he wants, but he's in love with the process 
and there's meaning attached to the process of, of achieving something. It's not actually the end result that brings him that fulfillment. That's just the, the celebration of it. The fulfillment is what he's getting day to day from actually doing doing it. You know, it was like when I first won the singles club championships in my local club in Clane. It's just like the process of actually like training and, and playing the matches felt better than actually holding the trophy. It's a weird thing to describe, and it's kind of something I've only realized having this discussion now. But yeah, you have to find, you have to love the daily grind and the process of making a result happen. And the result just lets you do that over and over again. So like with Rachel, she has to fall in love with the the marketing, with the sales, and that end result of having those 2K sales will give her the income her business needs to be able to do that over and over again so she can continue impacting her clients' lives and taking amazing photographs and creating amazing artwork and connecting with her clients and changing their lives and transforming their lives. That's what she really loves, if I was to guess. Yeah, interesting epiphany. It is, and I think it's interesting you say that, Jonathan, because if you look at most of us in our business journeys, it's kind of a little bit to what Brad alluded to, too. As you go on the journey, especially as a business owner, your goals and your desires and your needs to what you need to learn change. And so you have to love being on this path of being a business owner, of being an entrepreneur. That's almost the joy in the journey because everything always changes. So your first goal is to be a $200,000 studio. You achieve that. Are you going to stay there or are you going to now reach the goal of trying to be a half a million dollar studio? And we've talked about this before. What what gets you to 200,000 is different than what gets you to half a million. And then what gets you to half a million is different than what gets you to a million. Do you like the journey? Do you like the learning new skills? Do you Is that what gets you up in the morning? What, what you need to do in the daily grind? What do you need to do to predict what you're going to need to learn to get you to the next step? And are you always wanting to grow and learn? And everybody has a different need in that area. Some people... Uh, have that true entrepreneurial drive where they want to keep growing and discovering new things and finding new ways and having the new idea. And some people, it's their need. They need an income. And there's different, it's, in, it's very interesting. It is an interesting conversation running on uh, when you take the silly out of it and put in the the need versus the want and where you go with your business and your, and your daily desire and the journey. Well, bringing it back to that, we haven't heard from Ronan. So, Ronan, that is tell true. us. We haven't heard from Ronan. <laughs> tell us a time in your life where you decided that you really, really wanted something and nothing was going to stop you getting it. I can give you two examples. Do you want two examples? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so let me give you the first example. So, the first example, we're going to go back to 1988. Oh, I know what this one is. And I was 17. And there was a group of, it was very funny. So I went to a Christian brothers school, right? So it was all boys school. And in our town, it was an all boys school and it was an all girls school, but they did, that was run by the nuns. And they decided, we were the first year of this, they decided that they wanted to mix the schools because the schools were going to come together as one school. So they decided in fifth year, when we're starting, that's our final, our second last year as a senior, right? So um, that we're going to mix some classes between the boys school and the girls school so you can imagine what sort of riot that sent about in in hormones and everything else but anyway um that was when we started to create friend groups you know between the boys and the girls and then there was we we we, we there was a group and um we're in this group and you know there was people you know i'm gonna go out with her and she got me and all this sort of stuff anyway to a long story short uh, we're in this group for about, so we started school in September. So we're now in fifth year. So we're a year later, right? Exactly a year later in Christmas. And even though we're in the same group, we went, we went, we were all out at this, um, we used to use any excuse to get out and mix together. So we were at this play in the local town. We come out of the play and we're all chatting outside the chocolate box, which was the local, was the local shop. And I got talking to your mum, Jonathan, Susan. I went, oh, my God, I'm going to marry that woman. (laughs) 
Um, they say there's no such thing as love at first sight, but I say, I'm going to marry that woman. And I remember my best friend who lived beside me was actually a girl, Jenny, Jenny Eichler, if you're listening, Jenny. And you remember this story because we, the next day we were cycling home from school. Um, and I, I said it to Jenny. I said, Jenny, you know, Susan. And she goes, yeah, yeah, Susan O'Callaghan. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going to marry her. She said, would you stop? Don't be talking crap. Like you're not even going out with her yet. <laughs> you're going to marry her. So, um, so, but, but I, I, I said, no, I am going to marry that woman. So anyway, we're married now, by the way, for anyone who's listening. Um, and Jonathan is our son. <laughs> She's still putting up with me. But, um, she, um, but like, it was funny. I, I was like, um, I don't know what it was, but I, I just said, no, I don't care. So Susan was, we left school and we, we, we were in going to college um, and Susan was doing a, a course that was a year and I was studying to be an accountant. And that was one of the reasons why I gave up accountancy. I know I tell people that it was because of um, accountancy, but I knew because she was going to be finished early and was working that if I continued in college, the chances are she'd probably move on. So that's, that was actually the time when I went to my parents and said, can I work in the business? Because I felt that that was a risk. Um, and and she, she, she then, I said, if I have a job, then I have a chance, you know, of, of persuading this woman to marry me. Um, but if I stay in college, there was less of a chance of that happening. So, so I decided to go working. Um, and I've never told anybody this, not even your mother. Um, so we, we, we went, um, so anyway, to go long story short, she tried to drop me a couple of times. And of course, I, I didn't even realize she was trying to drop me. You know, she didn't actually say it right out. So like, I, I just don't get hints from women. I, I just can't read women at all. So, um, so anyway, to cut a long story short, eventually something came up and she said, well, if you, I can't remember what we were having a disagreement around something. And I can't remember the context of the disagreement, but she says, um, well, if you feel like that, then we just need to get married. And I went, okay. <laughs> um yeah so that was the first the first time i truly wanted something um and i i think if she told me to fuck off i still would have come back you know i, I wouldn't i wouldn't have heard her telling me that because i just wanted to marry this one no one's like um, chris now for the rest of the podcast <laughs> so Ron is Ron 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 curse word. but it was well placed so props to you so um so that's the first time i've wanted something and this i've always wanted stuff but um i think the next thing that i've wanted to that's a more current one but i've always wanted to do this i've always wanted to write a book but i'm crap at english i'm just so crap at english like as you guys tell me all the time i talk like yoda i talk backwards um so so um but you know it's getting there and it's it's been probably 20 years in the making <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's something I've always wanted. I can't explain why, but I've always wanted it. And I can't tell you why I want it, but I'm going to do it. Um, it's going to be published in the next six months, seven months, eight months. But uh, it, I just want it. And I can't tell you why. It's not about, it's not about a need. I don't, it's not to earn more money or be better known or any of that. It's just, I, I've always wanted to do it. And I can't explain why I want it. The same way as I can't explain why I wanted to marry your mother. I just wanted to. Interesting. Interesting podcast. Now Jonathan knows why he's here. <laughs> yeah, because of Ronan's once. Ronan's once. I like it. Tell us that story, Ronan. <laughs> no. Of how Jonathan here. Save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no. Regale it to it. us. <laughs> The podcast would definitely be banned if that was the case, uh, Brad. But there is an interesting story around that too. Oh, no, 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 a young man needs to sow his wild oats, you know. It's, it's highly unlikely that this will last, you know, and stuff like that. But there we are. She's still putting up with me 30 years later, 33 or four years later. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, John. It's funny we both said so at the exact same time. Anyway, what I want to know is what does this mean for our listeners? You mentioned you had a call with Rachel this morning and she was telling you about her amazing success with the Fully Book Challenge and in terms of getting bookings and, you know, now she's has amazing sales. She's worked hard on her sales process over the years and she realized that she wanted this. But what, like, what, what relevance is this to our listeners? Well, it's interesting because cause one, one of the things that Rachel said was that when she wanted it, she had to hit the rock bottom. She had to realize that, right, this is it. I want this. I don't need this. I want to create a successful photography business. I want to make a difference to my clients. I want my clients to invest with me so that I can create the life I love and that um, I can feel that I've accomplished something for myself and my family. That's what she wants. Um, But like, as she says herself, like she's been on this journey for a while and, but before she needed it, but she, it was just a mindset shift of wanting it. I'm just, I'm just going to do it. And if I don't do it, I'm going to give up. Like she said, it literally came to that. If, 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 if I keep needing it, I'm never going to get there. Um, so I, I want it. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to make it happen. You know, it's a bit like the example of your mum. You know, if your mum told me to go away, I, I would have just kept coming back because I just wanted it just wanted it you know i don't want to call that stalking or whatever but <laughs> i just wanted to marry this woman um, and 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 rachel is the same so if you truly 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 want to turn your business to turn your passion for photography into a business right but then you've just got to commit to it and you've just got to do it um and it's sad and sometimes that people have to hit rock bottom to go on that journey that they sort of put up with mediocre and they put up with not quite being satisfied. You know, you just got to do it. I think that's the lesson. You got to, you got to commit, you got to commit wholeheartedly and say, I don't care what happens. I'm going to do this. I want it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to enjoy the journey along the way. I think some, some of the challenges is that people don't know what they want. Yet they, they don't really know they, what they want. They think they want something, but it comes back to that, like falling in love with the process. Cause if you want to, I don't know. Okay. If you want to lose hundred pounds or 50 pounds, there's a certain process to make that happen, to make that want happen. And it's might be hard, <laughs> you know, you might not love the process, but if you want it, you have to do it. <laughs> So I think that can be a challenge sometimes. And, and sometimes it's just like, okay, you just accept that that's the path I have to take and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to force myself to fall in love with it. But I think, but I think you're hitting, hitting the nail in the head there, Jonathan, because, you know, certainly I in the past where I knew I needed to lose weight and I still do need to lose weight, you know, but I really didn't want to lose weight. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to go on that journey. I didn't want to put in the effort. I didn't want to, to, to actually achieve it. I think that's the difference between a want and a need. And it's a great analogy you've come up with about, with the weight loss. Cause we, a lot of us might know we need to, but we just don't want to. Interesting podcast. Brad, you gave me an epiphany today. Go you. Oh, full of John. I want to play tennis right now. So after this podcast recording, I am going to go play tennis. Good stuff. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I don't think that I'm counts. Not. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> Why not? That's it. We need to wrap this up before it gets worse. Yeah, yeah. I think on that note, guys, you know, if you truly want to turn your passion for photography into profit, just make sure you sign up on the 30 day challenge. You know, be like Rachel, be like everyone else who's been through it commit to it do it right and you will achieve what you want and if you want to hear more from the three the four stooges or the four musketeers and you want to hear more from us make sure you click that button below 
and press that subscribe button to the podcast. So from me, goodbye, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everybody. I want an ice cream, so I'm going to go get one. <laughs> see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>